Scorpio, the month begins with Mercury going retrograde October 4th in your sign. It dips back into Libra and goes direct on the 25th. But the message is, is that it's going to you, it's going to Scorpio, it's going to the depth. Go into the depth. And then take it back. Take it back to Libra. Take it back to the sign behind you, which is what you don't normally see, what you don't normally pay attention to, what you can't see because it's directly behind you, that spot four inches behind your head. No matter how fast you try to turn, it turns with you. So the revelation of what's there comes through more of an intuition or comes from other people pointing it out. So there can be things that get pointed out to you with communication, Mercury, from others that reveal a hidden spot, that reveals something that you haven't thought of before or you didn't even know existed. Very important time for you, and it's the time before your birthday. Of course, it starts on the 23rd when the sun goes into Scorpio of reflection, releasing, letting go, getting ready for your new birthday year. This Mercury retrograde chart with Mercury and Scorpio, of course, Saturn's been there for a long time, it has this grand trine that will weave in and out of the, through the month. A grand trine is when you have three planets 120 degrees away from each other creating a triangle. They're in fire signs, Jupiter, Mars in Sagittarius, Uranus and Aries, when you can get in the flow of this energy, because the trine energy is getting in the current, getting in the flow of life. And for you, it's around what you, how you want to be seen in the world, where you want to put your effort and energy, where you want to be inspired and in making some changes in your daily life and your health and your routine and your, the sense of your vitality, putting energy and effort in, into that. And when we get to the full moon eclipse, so the full moon on October 8th is a, a, an eclipse. This is highlighting that energy of releasing before your birthday and also awareness of where you can be your own worst enemy, where you can get tripped up in life. That part that questions like, why does this keep happening to me over and over again? I say I want something different, but it doesn't seem to manifest. The awareness of what could be stopping you that's so hard to get a handle on, the full moon can open that up. This is deeply involved in relationships as the Libra energy is ruled by Venus. Venus is what we love, what we value. And she is connected to Pluto, your modern ruling sign with Mars. And that is intensity, but it's in a square opposite this Uranus, the full moon here. So it's a balance between freedom in relationships and deep closeness. I want freedom. I want, I want to be myself. I want to do what I want to do when I want to do it. But I want my relationship when I want it. And trust issues, if you do not have trust in a relationship, if a relationship is not on a foundation of understanding, mutual agreements, mutual respect. This between the full moon eclipse and the new moon eclipse, things can get kind of rocky. Things will get rocky because it's a shake-up energy to shake things up to get back to the core of what is the deepest point of what we want, what we value, and what we feel that we're willing to do no matter what, that passion purpose, which brings us to the new moon in Scorpio happens the day that the sun goes into Scorpio on the 23rd. Venus goes into Scorpio on the 23rd, connecting to this new moon solar eclipse and reiterating that, see, Venus in, is involved with this eclipse. So relationships that aren't the right relationships can get, quote, unquote, eclipsed. It, and the message is to have in your life what brings you a sense of purpose, 
that get you out of bed and you feel very deeply passionate about and purposefully driven. Like this is really what I feel I need to do no matter what. And to put the effort and the energy and the time and the resources into it to create it. The ruling planet, Mars, traditional ruler, had just passed what's called the galactic center, and, and which is 27, 26, 27 degrees of Sagittarius. And that is a point that represents aligning with the center. I mean, just think of symbolically. What is your center? What does it mean to align with my center? Now, Mars in, in Sagittarius is this sense of putting, really feeling motivated by your belief system, you know, believing in yourself and believing that I can do this, I can do this, I just need to keep going, I need to keep putting it forth. The incredible power of this solar eclipse, solar eclipses are powerful new moons, but we have Venus, the sun, and the moon, 72 degrees away from Jupiter, 72 degrees away from, it's called septile, to Jupiter, to Pluto, and the 72 degree aspect is the aspect of creativity. When you divide the circle by five, you get a, that five star, the star that's five points, the pentagram, which is a mystical symbol of magical intensity. This solar eclipse has such intensity and is happy birthday. You know, whenever the new moon is in your sign, that's the official collective Scorpio birthday. So you get to celebrate for the whole cycle. <laughs> you get to celebrate. It doesn't even matter if you're at 29 degrees, if you're, you're, you're Scorpio, that is the very last day of Scorpio cycle. You get to start it with the new moon in Scorpio. So this point, and it, the eclipse will be more potent in terms of changing your job, um, that type of a thing, if you were born around the 23rd or 24th. But it's just as important for you, no matter what part of the cycle you were born in, to gather that energy together is what is it that I feel passionate about, what is my purpose, and using that creative instinct within you to go out and to manifest that which you want. So happy, happy birthday, Scorpio.